Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to run through another foundation wrap, the wrist lock. I'm going to show you two locks, the differences, some common errors and what they're useful for. Before we get started, if you're new here, my name's Brendan. I'm a physio based in Australia and on this channel I make videos about all things aerial. So if you enjoy circus fun, subscribe and turn on the bell to become a member of our Cirque fam. Alright, let's get started. And remember, you've got this. Wrist locks help to support your grip so you can focus on other things, whether it's conditioning exercises or nailing the perfect pose. While they can help, make sure you're also training without them so your grip stays strong. First up we've got the figure eight lock. To do this take your hand to the outside of the silk, do one full circle around then take the tail end of the silk and put it over your wrist. Turn your palm to face away from you and then hold on to the pole end. The tail should be on the thumb side of your hand. Wrist locks can be a little uncomfortable when you're first learning much like everything else in aerial but one thing you can do to make it as comfortable as possible is to wrap with a flat silk. If the silk is twisted in your wrist lock, it's going to hurt a lot more. Once you're comfortable wrapping with two hands, you can try doing the wrap with just one hand for a cleaner look. To do this, dip your hand under the tail end rather than using your free hand to place it over your wrist. Don't forget to turn your hand and then grab the pole end. Practice both sides one at a time until you're comfortable and then once you've got the hang of it, try a double wrist lock, wrapping in both hands. It's normal to feel like one hand is easier or more comfortable than the other, but with practice you'll master it in no time. Once you can do each hand separately, it's time for the double wrist lock. The double wrist lock starts exactly the same, it's just a little trickier when doing the second hand, as you're already wrapped in on the other side. The other thing that makes the double wrist lock difficult is getting them the same height. If you find one lock is higher than the other, it's usually easier to lower the higher hand rather than the other way around. If your silks have a bit of stretch, then it might be hard to tell if your locks are even until you put some weight through them. If you lift your legs off the ground and they stay level, then you've nailed it. The final way of using the figure eight lock is in a single wrist lock on both silks. Start with the standard figure eight lock, then take the free silk and hold onto them both in the locked hand. This is a great way to practice inversions without worrying about your grip. The reason I don't do a standard wrist lock with both silks is the knot's too big and it makes it really awkward to hold. It's much more comfortable if you just wrap in on one silk and then hold onto the other. Next up we've got the straps lock, commonly used in aerial straps. This is quick to get in and out of but it's a bit less secure. Start with your hand on the outside of the silks. Dip your hand under the tail end and use your free hand to help lift the silk over your wrist. Turn your hand to face the pole and hold on. The tail should end up on the pinky side of your hand. It should go without saying that you need to practice this on both sides. You should also practice the double wrist lock with this wrapping and you can even do the single wrist lock with both silks. When wrapping in, it's easy to grab the wrong side of the silk and the tail ends up on the thumb side in the figure eight. Don't forget to rotate your hand and high five the silk. If you've learnt something new, make sure you give the video a like to support the channel. The same thing goes for the straps lock. If you rotate the wrong way, the grip will be awkward and the tail will be on the thumb side. Rotate your wrist so the knot is in front before you high five the silk. So you might be wondering, what's the difference? Well, it's all about the level of support. In my left hand, I've got a straps lock. If I release my grip and then put weight through my hand, the wrap slides off. If I do the same on the figure eight lock, it can take a considerable amount of weight without giving way. Next up, I'm gonna show you a couple of great conditioning exercises. And if you hang around till the end, a little surprise from Ollie. the tutorial helpful. I'll leave another video here in case you haven't already seen it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!